Tony, next week for, is a huge week for Sarah Palin in her career. She's, uh, she, her memoir is coming out. She's going to be on Oprah. This is, I mean, is she looking at this, you think, as sort of a reintroduction to, to Sarah Palin? I do think that, and really it's going to be more back on the campaign trail. She's going to be with Oprah, Barbara Walters, and she's going to do uh, some Fox shows. But then she'll be back in some of the places that she was on during the campaign. She's actually starting Grand Rapids and back in Michigan, where we and we actually go into this in the book. She really wanted to give Michigan a second chance. I'm sure you'll remember that the McCain campaign pulled out of Michigan. She did everything in her power to try to convince them to go back in, even though the polling, the data, her, the McCain senior advisors said they had no shot there. We were able to access some private emails, and one email even was from Sarah Palin that said, it's a quick drive, I'll even pay for the gas. Hmm. So um, she'll definitely be happy to be back out there. So, Scott, what do you think, I mean, what does Sarah Palin want? Do you think she is looking at 2012 as a, at a presidential run? Yeah, I mean, we get asked all the time, do we think she's going to run for president? And and the short answer is we think, yes, she's going to at least explore it. I mean, she was not coy. She was asked directly after the election, do you want to be president? Will you run in 2012? She said, if there are any open doors, I will crash right through them. Now, she has a huge uphill uphill battle ahead of her. I mean, most of the country polls have shown do not think she's qualified to be president. Those disastrous Katie Kirk interviews are going to live on the internet forever. But throughout her career, she's been underestimated. So I think it's a big mistake for people to write her off. Do you know why it was she resigned as governor of Alaska? I mean, why she quit? Well, we were stunned as anybody, but we were up there after she came back and we saw what kind of homecoming she got. It wasn't the tens of thousands of supporters she saw on the on the campaign trail. She came back and the grind, the arduous grind of everyday governing was she she does, didn't enjoy it anymore. You saw how those ethics complaints got to her. But also the day that she resigned, Anderson, you remember her press secretary was in New York State, wasn't even up there. So it was quite a, it was a decision that was definitely made in haste. Yeah, I, I remember talking to the press secretary that night, and she was like, oh, yeah, we knew about this in advance, which seemed odd that, you know, why this woman would have taken vacation, though, when her, her main client uh, was about to, to resign her job. Exactly. Um, Scott, uh, Sarah Palin originally said she would cooperate with your book and then, and then clearly changed her mind. I think at one point they said you guys were stalking them. What happened? Well, yeah, I mean, when we first got the book deal, they said, yes, come up anytime you want. We'll do an interview. And so we did come up anyway. They, they ended up canceling. Meg Stapleton canceled on us. But when we got up there, we were in Juneau, which is a town of 30,000 people, about a tenth the size of Anchorage, to put that in some perspective. And we were walking down the street one day, and um, Piper Palin was coming the other way in the sidewalk. So we knew her from the plane. She had always used to come to the back of the plane to joke around with the press corps. And actually, we learned later that uh, one of... Uh, from one of McCain's senior aides told us that Palin would encourage Piper to come talk to us at the back of the plane, sort of butter up the press. So we knew her very well. We said hello, asked her how school was going, continued to walk. About a half hour later, Shoshana got a phone call from Governor Palin's press secretary um, that accused us of cornering Piper uh, at her bus stop for comment for the book, which as you know, Anderson, no journalist would ever ask a seven-year-old for comment on the book. <laughs> and then for good measure, she accused us of stalking uh, the governor. You guys have a fascinating story in the book about, you know, the, which kind of shows the dysfunctional relationship between the, the Palin teams and the McCain teams. Uh, basically on election night, Sarah Palin, you know, was furious that she wasn't allowed to give a speech. And after John McCain left the arena, she went back on stage with her family, ostensibly to take some photos. But McCain aides were so worried she was going to try to speak, they actually ordered the lights and sound turned off on her. Yeah, exactly. I and mean, they were so afraid that even after John McCain had left the hotel, that she was going to give this speech, the speech that she had been told four times up until almost at the stage that she was not allowed to give. They were so afraid that she would give this speech that they literally they turned the lights off and the sound off on her. And um, I mean, she she told uh, her friends and her family then that she just wanted to get up there and take pictures, but they they wouldn't take the risk. Uh, it's a fascinating book, Shoshana Walsh, Scott Conroy. Congratulations. Thank you Thank very you. much. Well, a quick note, just before Candy's piece, we talked about uh, what Ms. Palin said about her appearance on Oprah. It was not on her Twitter page, as we said. It was on uh, her Facebook page. Moving on. Tomorrow on 360, he was a...